Hi, it's Faelene and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Faelene. I do all types of videos in my world. Sometimes I'm talking about cooking, wine, traveling, and if you are interested in any of that kind of content, feel free to subscribe and you'll see more videos. And to all of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for joining me today. So what am I talking about today? So I am actually in my basement and I want to do a just really quick and brief, or maybe it's not brief, but just give you a sneak peek into my wine bar that I actually got customized when I moved into this new house here in Brookhaven. So if you're interested in seeing more of my wine wall and all of the little details behind the scenes of how I got it built and all that good stuff, stay tuned and see so, more. The first thing I thought would be cute to add to this wine area is just some kind of signage. And I am an internet girl. So people that know me know probably 80% of what I purchase in my house and on a regular is on the internet. And I believe in supporting small businesses that do kind of custom things and small uh, batch kind of things. So this was actually a company in Tennessee and I'll include their links. I found them on Etsy and they do these customized signs. They do a lot of signs for businesses, but they also do it for consumers. So I work with the girl that owns the store and we came up with this design. I love my little sign here. Our wine bar. Okay, part one. We got lots more to go. Let's go to another part of the, the wine. The ports in up at the top, they slide down, and then they kind of have like a really cute area to just to hang out. And this, you know, is battery operated, so, you know, it's got the time on it. But I thought this was a cute idea just to kind of display my wine courts in different kind of areas. So this is actually in the wall, in the hallway of my wine bar, this little wine court clock. Okay, let's kind of pivot and let me take you into the wine room. So this room is actually a pretty good size. So I knew that I wanted to actually have one entire wall filled with wine. So hopefully you all can see, let me try to set up this tripod. So this is actually my wine wall and I don't have a mic on or anything like that. So I'm hoping you can hear me pretty well in this video. But what I wanted was a very seamless look when it came to displaying the wines. I didn't want a lot of framework and I didn't want a lot of things that kind of distracted from the beauty of the wine bottles because I really do feel a lot of wine bottles can illustrate lots of creative ideas and artwork. So I didn't want it to be too cluttered with stuff that took away from the wine walls. So what I did was I had um, a couple of different companies come in give me estimates, talk to me about different design ideas, and I actually decided to go with this one company, and I'll include their links below, that I think kind of we vibe, me and the sales guy, Jonathan, we really kind of vibed a lot, and I liked his energy and his spirits. And so this wine wall actually has nine rows. It's about 163 bottles, which for me was more than enough. So I know some wine sellers have a thousand and two thousand bottles. I'm not really a collector like that. I'm a drinker. So I actually purchase wine, like to display wine, but I consume the wine. So I didn't want it to be something that was overwhelming for me. I'm also relatively new into the wine world. I've been doing wine and tasting and I've really gotten into it over the last 10 years, but a lot of the like true collectors, they've been doing it for 20, 30 years. And so that's why they have like a thousand and something bottles. This to me, 163 bottles to display was more than enough. So I'm going to show you some of the little details. Now I did decide to have glass installed in my wine and open up the doors. And I'll show you that. Now you don't have to, some wine walls, there's just literally the bottles of wine, but I thought the glass would be like a really nice touch. 
And when I go to restaurants, I'm always looking to see how they display the wine. And I was like, I think I, I, think I want it like a glass look. So let me take a look here. You can see the glass goes from the ceiling all the way down to the floor. And the company that I worked with, they came in and of course they measured all that good stuff. But the doors, you see I've got the nice little gold kind of bronzy brass handles. And so the doors allow me to kind of open up um, and I have two sets of doors and I'll include the measurements in, in case you're wondering, but this is like a standard, I don't know, 10 by 12 room. And so inside of the doors, you've got all these little pegs. And so this is actually a gold peg and this is a set. So you can actually get this online if you're interested in not maybe having something customized, you can actually purchase these pegs, these wine pegs, and it allows the bottles to kind of just slide there. And you'll notice that one part of the peg is up a little bit higher, I don't know if you can see that, than the other peg. So it's not actually meant to be installed where it's even. It's supposed to be a little bit higher than this one so that the neck of the wine bottle can actually easily store and kind of flow there. So I wanted a gold peg and I actually had to wait quite some time before the pegs came in. I think it was an extra two months, maybe three, because of back order and COVID and all that good stuff. I didn't want black, I wanted gold. And so I also did not want anything on the wall. I only wanted the pegs. Um, and so I have seen some wine rooms and they do have little de decorative things on the wall, which is a great idea, love it. But I just wanted something kind of simple where it didn't distract again from the wine and the wine bottles. So I purposely picked out this style. And so the wine company that I worked with customized it to measure the nine rows, how many pegs I needed. And again, like I said, it goes all the way down to the bottom. And the way I've kind of stored my wine, it's not necessarily in a particular order, but I kind of put a lot of the brands that are a little more expensive up at the top and then the ones that are still reasonable prices um, and good brands more at the bottom. No rhyme or reason, but I know I'm not going to necessarily, and I'll show you if I can, you know, break open an Opus One bottle of wine on a regular or an Ace of spade champagne that's also way up top um, on a regular. And so, you know, the Opus One wines, a couple hundred dollars, and the Ace of Spades. So I just wanted to display kind of the higher end wines that I do have in my collection up top. But again, I drink it um, not all the time, but every now and then. So inside of my wine bar, there is this little space here. And literally, you could fit behind this little space but it's enough space where I can comfortably get in here with a ladder and change out my inventory as necessary and um, enjoy my wine. The one thing that I will share with you is the fact that this is not a chilled refrigerated wine wall. And there's a couple of reasons why I didn't do all of that. So first, the cost. This costs a pretty penny, and um, I will share, you know, give or take of what I ended up spending, but definitely over $20,000. If I was to install the refrigeration and all of the cooling units, that can easily take me up another $20,000. Um, and it was gonna require a lot of construction work. So they were gonna have to go into the ceilings and install the ducts and do a lot more construction to the space that I was willing to do. So what they did is they actually, hopefully you can see, gave, gave me some space at the top here where it's a little bit of air that you can kind of feel and it circulates. So I do have a ceiling fan in this room. And the purpose of the ceiling fan is to keep my wines at least 70 degrees or cooler and i'm in the basement so the basement also is a very cool area in our house so i don't really have to worry about the wine the temperatures rising too much 
Um, but that's what I did as a trade-off for cost, is I decided not to do the um, refrigerating area within my wine wall, just to save a little bit on the, the funds. And so what I've done is I've tried to sort a lot of my red wines on this side. I drink champagne, as you saw already from the Ace of Spades. So the champagne is in the middle here. And then I'm a Chardonnay lover. So I do reds and whites, all of it. Chardonnay lover, kind of the next two rows. And then the last two rows are more of my Pinot Grigios, my rosés, the lighter blends. So, um, oh, and then let me just point out some of the black-owned wineries that I do have in this wall. Brown Estate. If you have not been to the Brown Estate tasting room in downtown Napa, or if you have not heard of the Brown Estate, and you are a black wine lover, shame on you. This should be something that you make sure you experience. So the Brown Estate wineries, black owned. It was a husband and wife team. I believe he was a doctor, a physician, and they were from the Caribbean island, lived in LA, decided to do some investment and purchase a vineyard in, in Napa. And as you already know, there's not a lot of black owned wineries in Napa. So if you're into supporting minorities, definitely support them. This is their Chardonnay it, by Brown, and it's pretty good. And the bottle is really cute. Look at that label. I love it, love it. So this is by the Brown Estate. I've got to shout them out. While I'm doing that, let me just show you some of the other Brown Estate wine that is my favorite. And so when people come over in my guest room or as gifts, what I do is I give them the Brown Estate. The Brown Estate has won awards in their Zinfandel. And so this is the red, the Zinfandel Brown Estate wine that I absolutely love. So the McBride Sisters is another brand to check out wine cruise in France next year with Theo. She's going to be the wine host and she's awesome. She's a lawyer by trade, but she has this vineyard. It's called Theopolis Vineyards. Vineyards. And my favorite of hers is the Petite Syrah. I love it. I love Moet. Um, I love Rosé Champagne. And so I do love and enjoy a good glass of champagne. And I'm also a mimosa girl. So let me show you my little mimosa area. Um, it's not that massive like the wine area, but I do have this little mimosa bar area here. And so I found this little neon sign somewhere online. It was inexpensive. And I have these little mimosa containers. So when me and the girls are drinking mimosa, I have orange, pineapple, cranberry, um, and then I also uh, got this little wine glass. Show you my other part of my wine bar that I think you're gonna love. So let me turn. And do you see this beautiful 3D looking wine cellar? This is actually wallpaper. So I'm gonna get a little close. And this is wallpaper. And I got this online and it's got the 3D wine cellar look. So it's very cool when you're sitting down here and there was like four or five panels and I got um, somebody from Task Rabbit to come and install the wallpaper. I'm not like really trying to do all that, but I actually measured my wall and I ordered it pretty similar to the size it needed to be. He only had to trim a little bit of it. So this is the wallpaper that I have stored on this part of the actual wall. Okay, so in addition to the wallpaper, my little setup over here is I actually have two sheepskin, sheepskin black chairs that I got from Restoration Hardware. And I'm a fanatic of Restoration Hardware. So I don't know if you've ever been in that store. It is me all day long. It's very kind of classic, contemporary, chic, high-end furniture that I love. So these chairs are fabulous. And so it's sheepskin, and so it's very durable for drinking wine, because I wanted to have something that wasn't going to get messed up um, if I spill a little bit of red wine, or we have a little oopsie. I mean, we are in a wine room. Wine room. So I wanted something durable, so I got this chair. There's two chairs. And this is wood, black wood, and then this is black sheepskin, and it does have a brush that I can kind of 
maintain, but I love these chairs. And they kind of sink down low, and so you can just be very, very comfortable in the space. I love it, I love it. What I also invested in was I wanted to have a little bit of accents of red and gold. I think I you know, said earlier, this whole cave basement area is more of the red, black, and gold um, matching kind of our football team. So I got this little gold um, set from Zika Hallery, if I'm not mistaken. It was on sale, and I just added some accent, little red fall, uh, fall um, uh, artificial red roses. And if you drink wine, you understand how when you pair wine with certain chocolates, or food items, it brings out the flavor, it enhances it. So I have uh, a little candy dish of Reese cups and Hershey kisses um, that we nibble on. And of course I have my candles. I'm a candle lover. I have a candle in just about every room of the house. And on the floor, I don't know if you can see this, but let me adjust the camera so you can see. So on the floor here, I have a cow, cow hide rug. And so it's a very thin rug. I got it online and I wanted to purposely find something that had more of a black and a brown feel, but it's just a really pretty accent that I have underneath my uh, chairs and my table uh, because the floor in here is the vinyl plank flooring um, in our entire basement because it is great for um, okay, I like your wine wall. Hopefully you like it. I love it. Where do you keep your wine cooled? And so right next door is where I have a whole nother wine uh, refrigerator unit. And so let me show you what that is. Okay, so I'm back in the hallway. The wine room is behind me and literally right across a couple steps. This is my husband's cave area. I'll do another video on that. But this is about the wine. I actually have a unit here that stores all of my wines that I chill. Definitely chill all my wines and my champagnes, white wines and champagnes. And sometimes I'll chill reds and let it sit out for like 30 minutes before I'll drink it. But a lot of times I'll do the reds and just drink at room temperature. But this refrigerated unit you can get on a lot of different places um, online. I think I, Wine Enthusiastic sells these. They're about $2,000 if you get one about this size. And it's great. And you can adjust the temperature up here. And so um, I kind of keep it in the 40s, 50s. And so this is where I store, definitely like I said, a lot of my champagnes are always chilled and ready to be drunk, consumed. Um, I have um, lots of different things in here. Oh, and then of course, because you're drinking wine, you got to dehydrate. So I also keep bottles of water in here. And like I mentioned, my um, mimosa bar, this is where I keep my orange juice and cranberry juice. And so this is a great alternative if you don't want to invest in having the entire wine area refrigerated and um, just chilled, just to save costs. So this is, like I said, this unit, this large unit here is around $2,000, maybe $2,300. The guys that did my wine wall mentioned that the worst places to put your wine storage is underneath the stairs because of all the movement on the stairs, it's not good for the wine. So that was a tip that I didn't know and I appreciate that quite a bit. So thanks for tuning in today and checking out my wine bar. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, let me know, comment. Like and subscribe if you haven't done this already. And until my next video, thanks so much for watching. Bye.